Let's look at this week's Just Name It Challenge. It's about web scraping and analyzing economic news, and it's considered to be of medium difficulty. What we're supposed to do here is to use the NIME web interaction extension, which is still in, let's say, labs status. And in a nutshell, this implements the Python package Selenium, which lets you remotely control a web browser. So rather than just using requests to obtain the HTML content of a website, this actually opens a browser like Chrome on your machine. And via the browser, you can click buttons and enter text and so on and so forth. And it's really useful that this is implemented into NIME because I remember from when I used it myself in Python, just setting it up with the browser, uh, web driver, and so on and so forth was quite difficult. Not even to speak about the syntax and, you know, working out what elements you need to, to grab. So that's where it's really promising to have that low-code functionality in NIME. We'll be scraping the Yahoo Finance Phonomic News section, so I've put it up already, and the task is to get the headers of only the most recent elements and to filter out, let's say, anything that's distracting like these ads, and I guess we will have to deal with cookie notices and so on and so forth, and then to visualize that in some sort of way. And we'll do that in nine. So let's get started. I grab the URL quickly. Jump nine. To start with, we will need web interaction start. But what this will do, when we configure it, we can pick our browser. For me, it's Chrome, but you can also use it with Edge, Firefox, and Safari. What I want to say here, though, is that uh, if you build something for Chrome and someone else uses a set with Edge or Firefox, there's a risk that it may not be working because websites may appear differently in different browsers. And also, let's say if you build a test workflow for your own website and it's under your control when you modify that website, you know, when you add buttons or remove classes in the HTML, then that are good. But if you use this to web scrape a third party website, then there's always a risk that they change that outside of your control and that then may break your web scraper. So whenever you do that with external uh, websites that are not under your influence, then you'll have to make sure that you test it every now and then and be prepared to modify it a couple of times per year if things change. But let's continue for now. When I execute this, this opens up a new browser window. Let me pull that open here. Maybe see, maybe do it like this. And to start with, it's empty. So to be able to now browse the website, we need a navigator. Like that. Let's move it here. And here we can put in a URL and specify what we want to do. So here we want to change to this URL. When I now execute this, we get to the consent page of you who find it. So that's where things get interesting for the first time. Here's a cookie notice, and we want to decline that. For the time being, let's just briefly make Nime a bit smaller. So in order to click this button, we need to find a way how to identify that. If I right-click on this and then go Untersuchen in German or inspect in English, we get to this DevTools view where you see the HTML. And as you can see, when I scroll over that, certain elements are highlighted. So let's now right click and spot it again. And it actually expands to exactly this button. You can see that now highlighted in, on the left hand side of the screen. In, the, in this HTML, we see that, they are, that the type is submit and there's a class of button and secondary and reject minus all and the name is also reject and the value is equal to reject and with these pieces of information we can actually make nine clicks at so what i do is i briefly copy this element just as a reference let's make nine a bit bigger for the time being as again and close this dev tools out i create an annotation and now we will get a clicker. 
And in this clicker, we can search for linked text or partial linked text, names, IDs, or class names. And what I want to do is I want to search for the class name and the one of the class names was reject minus boy. A, and a chance that this will open your brother window. Now I think it identified it. C, once this executes, I would expect that the cookie notice goes away. There we go. Awesome. So now we are in the game of working out how to grab all that is news. And for that, we want to identify the parent container that all these news are in. I click and inspect, and right click and inspect again. Now we see that there's a sort of a list, but if we scroll further up, we can see all the other different elements and a little bit further up. So here we now get to these type of containers that contain all those different line items in terms of news headlines. What we can see, see is one diff element with the ID of fin minus stream. And that is the content that we now want to retrieve in NIME. So let me just copy that element again. As a reminder, makes this a bit smaller and we would pull in a content retriever and we'll get, oh, we'll use the same workflow adaptation here. Aye, okay, so that's a bit bigger than what I expected uh, because it copied the full element. Anyways, let's just um, undo that. What we know is it's a thin minus stream that we need. So if I now go here, so this just gives us the HTML, so I can't actually specify it. So we grab the entire page here, and this entire page will be represented in XML format. And part of that XML is this diff with the fin minus string. So this is Nozif website. And this is now where we can start parsing with XPath nodes. And to start with, we want to only isolate the content that's nested in this diff with the fin minus string. We go to configure and we add a new XPath. We call this main, let's say. That's a new column name. And here we then want to search get all diffs. So double slash div. And then in square brackets, after that we say add id equals and then in quotation marks this fin minus stream. We want that as a node cell. So let's make sure that we get XML type content again and single cell here is OK. We go and execute this. Now we have only the contents of our fin minus stream. If we now inspect that a bit further, we can see that there are these li items. So if I now make this small, every li item here contains one use line of news. So next we want to grab anything that is an li element that is inside of um, this main content that we are. So we had another X personal note and I on to one thing different. We want to get rid of the source column so that we always have only one XML column. Let's tick this as well. So now out of the main, which we created, we want to grab the LIs and we again say just grab all the LIs that will be a node set of ones again, but this time we go for multiple rows because we want to have one row per li item. For now, if we look at these li items, we are for the time being again. So overall, the heading is in this h3 tag, so heading 3 tag. So that's definitely something that we want to grab. So now out of the li nodes, we just grab the heading. Let's remove this for now. Then Another X pass note. And we will call that Python and we grab any H3 and that should be a single cell and string cell because there's only one H3 in every LI. 
And if we now expand this table, we can see that we have all the headlines. So that's almost part one done. The one thing that's also part of the task is that we should filter out ads. So here's an ad. So that's not a news line, but that's an ad. But we have it in our data set. And there's another ad here. So we now want to work out how we can grab this ad identifier so that we can then filter it out before we do something with that. If I now click on inspecting this, that's a bit of a look. So just under the LI, there's a diff. And in this diff containers, there are classes for um, Gemini minus add, and this is data test locator equals React minus Gemini minus feedback minus container. And with one of these, we will now identify this as a net. And um, all the others that are not at that won't have this. And that, that's how we can then later on distinguish between the two. So we do that actually in the same node because we're looking at the same LI. And uh, we will simply add another X pass, call this add, string cell and single cell is OK again. And what we will do here is we search for all diffs and we want to find only those diffs and get the content where z data minus test minus locator. So that's this line here equates in quotation mark react minus Gemini react minus container. That gives us two columns then. So let's click OK and let's re-execute that. And when we look at this table now, we can see that all those that are not ads, they have a missing value. And those that have an ad, they have ad and some other stuff in there. But that's good enough. So with that piece of information, we're actually done with all our web interaction and web scraping. And we can now simply it all. And I think I just go for a wolf pro filter here. And let's add a criterion that matches wildcard and that wildcard is that star. So wherever ad is in, it matches. And then we obviously don't want to keep the ads, but we want to only keep those that don't have ad. And now look at the table. We only keep the headers. So the last step that I want to do is just output that in a table view. So let's grab a table view node. Let's keep the title, remove the F. We don't need any row IDs. It's, you know, Yeah, the last thing that we want to do is actually close this browser window again once we've done that. So for that, we need an end node. You have interaction end, and we want to execute this after only the table view has been generated. So this way now, let, uh, I mean, let's execute this once briefly. This node closes out the browser window, and if I now go reset all, I can actually Click on this, which will start the workflow at the beginning. And now, and actually look at how it goes through this workflow step by step. So, and clicked it away. Node grabs the content that probably takes the longest. And, and then once the content is there, there's a filtering and everything and closing it down is very quick. And in our table view, we have Aussie news headlines. That was a walkthrough of my very simple solution. Or this time around, hope everyone enjoyed, and I see you next time.